The Devil's Half Acre was a fitting name for the notorious slave prison in antebellum Richmond. In this squalid compound, human beings were sold to the highest bidder. Families were separated, lives were destroyed. Three blocks away, a young boy, Moses Jacob Ezekiel, worked in his grandfather's store, outfitting blacks who were bound for the auction block. One of 14 children born to a respected Jewish family, Moses lived with his grandparents above the store. In 1917, Sir Moses Jacob Ezekiel died in Rome. He was 73. A prominent sculptor with an honorary title, Sir Moses had spent 40 years entertaining poets, artists, and royalty in an enchanting studio that he designed inside the ancient baths of Diocletian. Moses Ezekiel had traveled from a modest Jewish household in Richmond, Virginia, to Rome, where he worked in the shadow of the great masters of classical art. His remarkable journey is a story of relentless determination and the guiding hand of an unlikely muse. <laughs> Slavery was as natural to Moses Jacob Ezekiel as the morning mist that hovered over the James River. It was an evil that we had inherited and that we wanted to get rid of in a way that would be just to the Negroes and just to ourselves. Moses Ezekiel from his autobiography. The Ezekiels owned four slaves, including Robert, Mammy Keziah's son. When Robert stole from Mr. Beck's oyster house, the family sold him down south to spare him merciless whippings while in jail. The next day, Moses went to see Mammy Keziah. She was sitting with Mammy Mary and Jane Eliza singing a sad hymn. Touched by their grief, Moses decided then to ignore the law that punished whites for teaching slaves to read. After that, we studied together every evening, till it was time for me to go to bed. I was then going on to my twelfth year. Moses slept in a trundle bed in the attic. Often, the imaginative boy experienced frightening visions of an immense eye with a deep blue pupil following him around the room. One night, the nightmare softened, and the deep blue eye became part of a beautiful face. If you lead a virtuous life and observe the Sabbath, you will finally be able to cross the ocean and work as an artist. Moses awoke hurriedly, recorded the dream, and hid the paper behind a brick in the wall. I had always an instinctive desire to go to Europe to study art, but I never spoke of it as I could see no possible chance that any such wish of mine could ever be accomplished. Ezekiel's pessimism was not unrealistic. His grandmother discouraged his creative ambitions, insisting that an artist's life violated the second commandment. You shall not make for yourself a sculptured image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or in the earth below. But the Civil War soon became Ezekiel's greatest obstacle. And yet, ironically, Without that bloody conflict, Moses Ezekiel might have lost his dream forever. When news came of the secession of South Carolina, bonfires were built on almost every corner of the town. I became so enthusiastic that I begged my grandparents to let me go to the Virginia Military Institute, secretly hoping it would get me into the war. His youthful wish would soon be fulfilled. Moses Ezekiel entered VMI in September 1862. When Union troops threatened the Shenandoah Valley in May 1864, Confederate General John Breckinridge mobilized the Corps of Cadets. After an exhausting four-day march from Lexington to Newmarket, where the enemy was converging, Ezekiel and his student comrades arrived in the drenching rain. The battle turned against his forces, General Breckinridge said, Put the boys in, and may God forgive me for the order. Despite blistering fire, the VMI cadets held the line and pushed forward when more seasoned troops stalled. Yeah! 
Moses was lightly wounded, and his roommate died in his arms. The war was over. Richmond lay in ruins. VMI burned to the ground. My future life seemed so dark and unsatisfactory for the simple reason that I felt I ought to be an artist. And yet, I could see no possible way of ever studying art or to get away from America for that purpose. General Robert E. Lee had accepted the position of president of Washington College in Lexington, Virginia. He immediately came to visit VMI boys who had returned to their studies. When the two met, the general asked Moses what he planned to do after graduation. I told him that I really did not know, that we had lost everything, and that very likely I would have to earn my living in a doctor's profession. General Lee became Ezekiel's unlikely muse. I have often heard about your talent for painting and sculpture. Don't you think you will follow art as a profession? I hope you will be an artist, as it seems to me you are cut out for one. But whatever you do, try to prove to the world that if we did not succeed in our struggle, we were worthy of success. In a letter to his brother Henry, Ezekiel examined his life's journey. To tell you the truth, dear Henry, although you may know it, I have perfect enthusiasm for art, an enthusiasm that fires my whole soul and mind, to such an extent that I am willing to relish poverty and every labor that would aid me in securing the object of my ambition. I am only truly happy and contented when I am at this work. I am in a world of my own, and the hours pass away only too fast for me. I have tried in every way to drown ambition and taste for the beautiful. Mm -hmm.